entertaining, a dazzling escape. Wow. It's the My Michelle Live podcast. My, my, my Michelle Live. Hey, it's My Michelle Live Entertainment Review. We look at some of the entertainment news of the week, some new releases, and all things entertainment. Now, we take what we get, we unspin it from what's slung out there in the mainstream, and we look for the God story. So what could be cooler? That is what you have in store, and we are doing it with the one and only Adam Holt. That's pretty cool. Plugging you into the movies, this is Adam Holt. Adam, it's been a while. It's good to connect with you. Again. It has been a while. It has been a while. I've been doing some traveling and just had a lot going on. So it's great to see you. It is very good to see you. Shall we take in some entertainment news, my friend? We'd love to. Let's do it. Entertainment news. All right. Thank you, big voice guy. So in the news, some big stuff going on for Christian Films, Adam. His only son... A movie that was made by a Marine who went to film school and learned how to do this kind of stuff on his GI Bill, puts together this movie, takes five years to make it. We interviewed him. I'm sure you guys have talked with him. But this film was made on a shoestring, $250,000. And yeah. it passed the $11 million mark. That is incredible. Incredible. And let me just add to that, the faith-based movie Jesus Revolution has grossed over $50 million at the box office. That's crazy. It's crazy. And I think it just shows that there is absolutely a market for stories that involve faith. And obviously with Jesus Revolution, we have John and Andy Irwin who are consummate professionals. They understand how the system works. They work with Lionsgate, a mainstream distributor, and they have really perfected their craft. But I think with a movie like His Only Son, it's great to see somebody who's just taken their first stab at it have such a remarkable result. And I think that it surprised everyone, but it's Groundhog Day, right? Not literally, but we talk about this every year. Like every Easter, it feels like we have the same story. Oh, I can't believe they're there are people out there who want faith-based stories or <laughs> faith-based stories, or at least, at the very least, stories that don't throw Christians under the bus. I'm not asking for much. Come on. <laughs> no, I mean, the standard's pretty low here. And when those movies are well done and when there's publicity and people know about them, they can generate a lot of interest. And when we get to talking about movies, there's another interesting Christian film that's super under the radar that it starts this week and we can circle back and talk oh, about Oh, definitely. Yeah. So Jesus Revolution, by the way, announced this week, their official Facebook page, that they will be putting the film out on digital platforms Tuesday, April 25th. So I encourage yep. you, there are free ways that you can see it. His only son, we encourage you to go and see it in the theater because it really does make a statement there are ways yeah. that you can not only go for free but you can help others go for free it's a pay it forward option they have on their site for his only yeah. son pretty cool i thought it was interesting this week in a news story that came out tuesday michael w smith is a well-known singer songwriter within the christian realm he's responsible for a lot of the well-known music worship music that we have he credits the jesus revolution not the film but the actual revolution in the 1970s for his entire career he said it changed his life and i'll tell you what wow. He had an impact. When I was a real little girl, I saw Michael W. Smith towards the beginning of his career, when he was a lot younger. And that yeah. guy had an energy. He wasn't just sitting there on stage with his hands folded in a choir robe singing. And a lot of people had experienced that up until yeah. uh, maybe his time. He was like this ball of fire bouncing off the stage with energy that was unbounded. It was just an incredible thing. I love it because as a recent author of Find Your Voice, I talk about some of the importance of each one of us 
our experience, who we are, our personality can reach people that other people can't. You could That's stand right. on stage in your choir robe and you're going to reach some people who need that message. But then you could be a yeah. Michael W. Smith bouncing off the walls and you're going to reach someone like me. It's astounding. So I, I was moved by that. Some other things in the news, Adam, former Nickelodeon show that you may have been aware of, A Fairly Odd Parents. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah, I, your kids Vaguely. may have watched it. I don't know. That 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 show was actually innovative, funny, and charming. Yeah. I, I liked it. But the people behind it, the guy behind it, Butch Hartman, he is, uh -huh. and his wife are launching a cartoon to teach kids about the Bible, of all things. Yep. Yeah, we just talked about this in our staff meeting yesterday. And this is exciting. It's exciting when people who have the kind of name recognition that he has and the resume that he has, bringing that to the table and putting those creative impulses and abilities more than an impulse to work for the kingdom. And I think sometimes, I want to be really careful here, I think sometimes Christian creators, we have a lot of enthusiasm and earnestness but we may not have the professional chops to really compete directly in the marketplace. And let me just and so say, when somebody like okay. does that, and it is okay. Yeah, everybody has to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. so I really don't mean that as a criticism. No, it's just a fact. We, <laughs> it's just a yeah, outline. It's, it's, it's just, just a, a fact. fact. And that's okay. Um, do what you're called to do. But yep. also learn to do it with excellence. It is not Absolutely. enough that you do a, a film or you start a podcast you want to do all things with excellence and you need to learn the guy who put together his only son he went to school he learned it may be his first film but he did everything he could to make it excellent on a shoe string budget you can do that too another shameless plug for my book go to findyourvoice.fun and you can find out how you can do that for expressing your voice so good for them this cartoon's called the garden it's an animated show centered around lenny the lion and lucky the lamb and i think it sounds pretty sweet another thing for kids yep. christian rapper KB. Now, he says mainstream mainstream hip-hop is not only anti-faith, but like you were mentioning, just fine. You want to be your own thing? Just leave us alone. Don't have to throw an entire faith under the bus. But he says they're teaching kids to hate Jesus. He's a three-time Dove winner and author of the book, Dangerous Jesus. And he says, you know what? They have not only been anti good things they've been pro misogyny rape cop killing but they're also anti jesus and he said in some areas this is food for thought in some areas we as people of faith they have separated from maybe the rap scene maybe don't get it or adverse to the Black Lives Matter movement, which has been anti-family, not adverse to black lives at all, not adverse to keeping police accountable, just adverse to saying, okay, some of the issues of the movement, so to speak, or the anti-police portion, portions of the movement, that is some sources of contention, wouldn't you say, Adam, in the faith world? Yeah. And you said, mend those fences, because supporting Christian rap is supporting a movement within that culture that can reach kids. Yes. Yeah. And it's such an influential thing. I think when I was growing up back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth and stuff. At least your kids will say you that. Know, you would go rock, rock and roll was under a lot of scrutiny by Christians and rock was the dominant musical expression. Rock still exists, but nobody cares about it anymore. And nobody buys it. And so on the charts, the only thing you're going to find on the charts is rap and R&B. For the most part, an occasional country song will sneak in while nobody's looking. But R&B and rap are combined. And they're separate genres. I understand that. They are the lingua franca of the realm. This is what people are listening to. And so I'm so thankful that we do have people like KB, like Lecrae, like NF, who are really trying to do not just a super sanitized Christian substitute, 
but really terrific art that stands on its own. If you've listened, I'm more familiar with Lecrae and NF. If you've listened to either one of them, they have incredibly deep lyrics that are informed by their faith, but they don't pull the punches with regard to hard stuff they've been to. Lecrae has talked openly about getting his girlfriend pregnant and then paying for her abortion. And then the guilt and the things he's had to process. I'm like, man, it's not sanitized at all, but he's coming from a redeemed perspective. And I think in that genre, it's so important to support artists who really are bringing that deep, redemptive message of Christ into a genre that I would agree is largely lacking that. Especially since there is a target of the, yeah. our children. And this is the final story today. There's a children's television program that is going way trans and it's a tv show on a public broadcasting network and it has adults that strip naked in front of kids and invites them to ask questions about their bodies they had a group on one of their episodes of trans identified adults that took their clothes off to reveal their surgery scars and discuss underwear packing now this show is a dutch show so it's mm -hmm. called Jiwoon Blut, which is simply naked. And though it's Dutch, now clips are circulating to York to a child near you on TikTok and Twitter. Just, it's pretty graphic and a lot of propaganda that just goes to kids whose minds aren't completely formed yet. And that's the problem that I have is that there's really no balance. There yep. are, it's anything goes where our kids are concerned. That's why some of these messages that we talked about from Christian rap to the cartoon, the garden to these faith-based movies might be more important than. Absolutely. And I would say the conversation is one that we have to enter into. And you and I have talked about this before, but our culture is having a conversation or a sermon is closer to an accurate description with so much of this stuff. There's propagandizing happening with regard to a worldview that embraces an understanding of sexuality that is at odds with what scripture teaches. Mm. And so we as parents, as grandparents, as people working in churches and ministries, as people who are just concerned, we have got to be able to have a conversation about sexuality and what scripture says about it. And it has to go further than God says this behavior is bad or God doesn't like this. To understanding, I think in a fairly sophisticated way, this was God's intent with the creation of sexuality and he called it good. And in the right context, it is an incredibly good and beautiful thing. But I think what's happened in our culture is our culture has thrown God out the window, but we're created to experience something bigger than ourselves, to experience transcendence. And when you when your culture rejects God, oftentimes I think sexuality goes into that void, but our sexuality was never intended to carry the weight of our entire identity. Ooh, it's important. Whoa. But it, that it, is a, that's a drop the mic moment. All right. Our sexuality is really important, and sometimes our culture minimizes it. But the other thing it does is it says our sexuality is the most important part of who we are and the most important things in our lives, and that's not true either. If you look to this aspect of your personhood and your body to provide the most important lens through which you process the world, you're going to end up confused and depressed because it can't do that heavy lift. And it doesn't matter so, if you're if you're that viewpoint honestly when you come from that viewpoint no matter what your identity is your attraction right. is even right. in a spiritual setting in, a, in the confines of marriage when that is your only focus you're out right. balanced. And that You're happens out of as well. Uh, the thing that yep. I think that we need to keep in mind uh, as people of faith is walking in a way that shows people 
this may, your choices may not be God's best. I've made a lot of choices that aren't God's best. That doesn't define me. It doesn't define my relationship right. with you or my love for you. Just went shopping yesterday and a transgender person behind the counter and I just had a great time laughing, joking about the yeah. things that, that we were, per- I was purchasing. And as I walked, this person grabbed my arm and said, you know, this was one of the best experiences I've had in a while. You just uplifted my spirit. And I said, I hope so. I'll be thinking about you and praying about you. I wasn't sharing Jesus. I wasn't getting all right. spiritual on them. We were talking about things that I was purchasing and the beautiful weather. It's just love. And that's what we need to right. walk in. And that makes things simple. <laughs> and we use words like transphobia. And I want to be super careful here, but I think, for those of us who think this maybe isn't the way it needs to be, maybe what we need to do when we encounter those people is set aside that, oh, this is a trans person. It's, this no, is a this person. Is a person <laughs> Thank right? you. And I can just relate to them as a human being because, frankly, Jesus said, do unto others the way you would have done unto you. Come and on. I think yes. most of us just, we just want to relate as human beings. And I think, unfortunately, the division in our culture on so many levels, there's so many different variants of us and them. There is. Okay. And if we and think it's it, ridiculous. But it just divides them. If we think it's ridiculous to judge someone because of the color of their skin and say, oh, this is black, oh, this is white, and, and we're like, stop dividing us, but yet we do that when we look at someone who has purple right. hair or is wearing a rainbow right. shirt or looks as though it's a guy wearing makeup. It's a person, and that is all that mattered. Jesus didn't delineate any of that as he was dying on the cross, and nor should I. Let's get into some movie reviews shall we? Yeah. So there is a movie called Sweetwater. It's a 2023. Yeah. If you want to look up Sweetwater, look up 2023. As I googled right. it, I came up with a 2017 one, which yeah, is an completely one. different. We'll just Very say. different. Yes. But let's take a little look at the trailer and you can tell me what you think. And if this is worth a see, this is Sweetwater. The color of my skin. It's about being true to the game of basketball. Nathaniel Clifton. I always known you was born with a higher purpose. Joe Lapchick. Matt Clifton. Some call me Sweetwater. I coach a team called the New York Knickerbockers. Ain't no Negroes playing your league. It's not gonna be like that forever. The NBA champs got their asses kicked by an all-Negro team. It's like a circus, though. It's Ringling Bros. Sweetwater knows this game better than anyone. I will fight for this. I want to fight with you. Sweetwater, (laughs) that was your last game wearing a Trotter uniform. Your next game will be in a Nick jersey. Okay, let's take this one on, shall we? Yeah, this, as you've seen from the trailer, is the story of Nat Sweetwater Clifton, who was the first black player to play in the NBA. He played for the New York Knickerbockers starting in 1950. And in some ways, I think this is a parallel movie to 42, the mm-hmm. Chadwick Boseman movie about, I'm totally blanking, James, uh, uh, Robinson. Robinson. Yeah, am I blanking on his name? Anyway, <laughs> my bad on that. And it really is about what he encounters as he is invited to do this and just the racism that he experiences and all of the ways that that he is a trailblazer, right? And he's demeaned, he's dehumanized, he has to deal with people's racism, but he perseveres through that. And so I think even just the trailer gives you a pretty good sense of what to expect there. And I love sports movies. Sports movies are always inspirational. Live, I we do a sports show with my Michelle live. It is amazing how sports is an analogy for life, and you see the struggles of life yeah. pay, played out on the court, the field, the pitch. So there's something to sports films. I like them. They're inspirational. You go against the odds and all of that. Yeah. And then you add this kind of element. It's good. But there are some language issues for families yeah. to keep in mind. Yeah. Uh, maybe some other issues as well. It's the issues of racism are here. And I think 
like 42 and like some of the other movies we've seen about racism, it's Jackie Robinson, by the way. Thank I just, you. my brain froze up. And I think especially for younger people, obviously racism is still a real issue today. It's something we're still grappling with. I think when we go back and watch a story like this, I hope that we're able to say, despite what we may see in the news, there has been some progress since oh, 1958. I think that's great. And when we scrub things, you see a lot of things. Disney, for example, they've scrubbed some of their movies. They've put yeah. these big warnings. To their credit, a lot. some of those movies are gone. You'll never see zippity doo da again unless it's in the black market. But some of this scrubbing scrubs away our history and we forget where we've come from and how far we've come. As you right. were alluding to, I, I liken it to, on a lighter note, slapstick. That kind of comedy where you're hurting people and hitting them with, yeah. you know, it, now it's rel it's relegated. In fact, you don't even see it as much in cartoons, all Bugs Bunny reruns. Yeah. That, But that kind of humor isn't really part of our humor. We don't laugh at someone because they're old and they can't walk across the street. That's right. I think, I think the power of a story is when a story is well done, it can help us to understand somebody whose experience is different from our own. And I think especially with our kids today, this is one that if you have, I would say for teenagers on up, because I think there is a little language and there is some violence and some threats. I wouldn't watch this with little children, but I think for tweens, mature tweens and teens on up, it could be a great conversation starter and it's a terrific movie. I like it. We have, we're pretty short on time, so we're going to go yeah. with one more movie. It's called Nefarious. And this one is a, is like nothing I think I've ever seen. And I know you let me know you felt the same. Nefarious is a faith-based film, but it's like a thriller to watch a few yeah. seconds of this and you'll get what I'm talking about. Execution scheduled for 11 p.m. But he's trying to convince us he's gone insane. And therefore incapable of being executed. I need you to prove he's faking it. Edward? I'm gonna ask you some questions. I'm not Edward. I'm a demon. What? And then it gets weirder from there, right? <laughs> It does. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. I'm okay. looking forward so, to it because I, this is the kind of film that I find artistic, interesting, outside of the norm, and dealing with something that is a real issue that we like to sweep under the table. Yeah, this was one of the, I lack even adjectives to describe it. But in the story here, this man is sentenced to be executed and the psychiatrist has to pronounce whether he is sane or not because if he's technically insane they can't execute him well this serial killer the guy in prison basically says i'm a demon and my name is nefarious and the psychiatrist who's a staunch atheist says prove it to me and they have the bulk of the movie is them sitting across the table from each other with this demon talking to this atheist psychiatrist. And it's a little bit screw tape letters. Yes, it's a little bit. Yes, that's even, what it seems like. Uh, although darker and definitely more intense. I have never, I don't remember the last time I was watching a Christian movie where I had a screener and I could pause it. I have pages and pages of dialogue, some of which is going into my review, which I'm still writing. It'll be up later today. Outstanding. This is a remarkable conversation starter, but that it's rated R primarily for an execution scene at the end that I felt was gratuitous. I felt, okay, this pushes it out of bounds for some people, but 
really interesting movie. If you see it, I want to know what you think about it because I think we'll talk about it next week. Tremendous question. uh, And if you see it as you're watching, listening, or viewing, I ask that you let us know what you think. Adam, thank you. We're out of time, but I want to thank you and remind anyone who is listening, watching, or viewing, you can go to (laughs) pluggedin.com and get reviews on pretty much every movie out there. Just put it in the search engine and you can know before you go. Thank you, Adam. It's good to connect with you, my friend. And for you, God bless you. And thanks for watching and listening. Don't forget to like and share us. More entertainment at mymichellelive.com. Boom.